Welcome to the dang good show. Life as it is is already tough. Why not make it a little bit more comfortable with some fun? Each episode, I will deliver straight facts to inspire positive change so you can live a dang good life. If you want to learn how to be more social and self aware, or just want to hear some great advice and life's adventure with a few laughs, then this show is definitely for you. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'm your host, C Dang, from the beautiful Vancouver of British Columbia. Via Canada. You can either catch me on Instagram at Christine underscore Dang or my website c dang.com. Hey, what's going on? What's shaking and what's shakalaka lacking? Dude, oh man, I can't believe it's been a year. A year since Kobe Bryant and his beautiful daughter Gianna's passing. Then COVID happened. Then Trump happened. Then Black Lives Matter happened. Then the attack on the Capitol. Happen. The news was all about COVID and was super focused on our American friends. It was chaotic. So much has happened with so many changes that has occurred or have occurred. Jeez Louise, I mean, it's enough to freak out Auntie Alma. I don't know who Auntie Alma is, but if she's somewhere out there, she's shaking her boots, I tells ya. I don't know about you, maybe you agree or disagree. I find that 2020 has brought out the worst in people, the absolute worst. Like, my heart broke seeing the horrors that was happening in the US and throughout the world. So many lost souls. I'm sure you felt the same. It's pretty darn cringing. But at the same time, it brought out the best of people. Unity, love, compassion, respect, fighting for what's right, which brought me to tears every time I hear a speech somewhere online. I love how people and a lot more people are just downright more open minded and honest. Learning how to be better and love more without boundaries, judgment, or criticism. It's a mix between vulnerability and courage, and it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable. And in recent news, oh, my heart, it ached not out of sorrow, but out of happiness because President Biden and Vice President Harris happened. We went through the most drastic changes, my friend, yet people seem to hold on to what was and still resist what's happening right now. And if that sounds like you, you need to stop because don't fight the change. It's gonna happen regardless. I mean, look at the world right now. It's happening right now. <laughs> I asked my peeps on Instagram a few questions on change. Like, why is change so scary? What's the most terrifying thought about change? One person said, not doing something about it, the other, losing a person. Or the best answer I think is that change creates uncertainty, the unknown, that's uncomfortable. So, and then I asked, how do you embrace change? One person said, do it and fail. But what I really think is that you do it and fail, you learn your lesson and bring that forward to make the next chapter a lot easier. Or the older I get, the less I want change. Or allowing myself to be open to the opportunities and possibilities it brings. And lastly, Sarah, my homegirl said, stay focused, ask yourself, what is the end goal and why is change important? Now, what is the greatest lesson from change? Some people said growing, which is like the biggest, biggest, biggest thing from change. And another person kind of shared her experience saying, moving to Italy showed me that you couldn't escape from your problems, they move with you. I agree 100%. No matter how much you change your scenery, it's your thought and how what you think you bring with you. <laughs> so if you don't battle your demons, it will never ever get resolved. And another friend put, good or bad endings doesn't matter, which is quite true because it doesn't matter what experience you go through, good or bad, it's the lessons that you take out of it and bring forth that matters. And the last thing is that change is inevitable. If there's no change, there's no growth. Well said, everybody. As you see, change is going to happen one way or another, and everyone does experience it. You just heard it from everyone else with their answers, which I thank you guys. I'm so grateful you took the time out to answer my questions. Now, don't resist it, because if you do, life is going to be a rough ride through the world of stress, anxiety, and depression. Yo, why you gotta put yourself through that? Like, that's just torturing yourself. 
Here's a trick that I do that could help. This is something I've tested repeatedly and it's still the best approach for me. It might not be for you, but hey, we are here to learn how we can live better together. Okay, so hear me out. I try to psych myself out all the time, like be my own cheerleader because it's just me on this journey called life. So if I'm not my own cheerleader, who's going to really help me push through life, right? So you got to learn how to kind of love yourself and be like, yeah, you can do it. Okay, anyways. If it's the type of change that stresses the crap out of me, I tell myself, ooh, this is going to be tough now, but something really, really good is going to come out of this, like something great. And it usually does, guys. I stay curious and I always look out for clues because the universe works in mysterious ways and we always get what we think the most. So change your thoughts change your minds to change your outcomes sometimes we create our own heartaches through expectation let me say that again sometimes we create our own heartaches through expectations let's take it back and think about the changes we have gone through already we've been changing since we were kids and it's comforting to know that everyone went through these same same type of changes for example let's take a look at the timeline of emotional growth it ties down with our own development to understand and control or straight to it our levels of maturity so we know the word empathy right that's a big one the ability to understand and share another's feeling or the other is emotional self-regulation which is controlling your emotions and how you act for example as a kid we threw anger tantrums when we don't get our way but as adults we don't do that anymore <laughs> can you imagine a grown-ass man on the floor belly down kicking and banging on the ground with his fist all the while crying and screaming because he got rejected on a date now that's something to see for sure the absolute horror <laughs> Empathy and emotional self-regulation started building since we were kids. There's a section about kids and EI, emotional intelligence, in Daniel Goldman's book called Emotional Intelligence, How It Can Matter More Than IQ. This section, I think, is important for us to grasp so we can be more accepting to changes. The author and psychologist Daniel Goldman is the beast when it comes to emotional intelligence. He wrote some killer articles for Harvard Business on EI emotional intelligence that it is the secret weapon to success in the workplace and home life the more we learn about ei the more we can live our best lives being our best selves let me repeat that the more we learn about ei the more we will live our best lives being our best selves that's what i've learned in these past few years from researching and really just talking about EI to other people. The world needs to know more about it. If you are curious about this book, I'm going to leave a link somewhere below. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you so much for your support. On Instagram, follow me at Christine underscore Dang, where I share aha moments and a few laughs. And lastly, if you want to find out more information about the show, visit thedanggoodshow.com. Let's get back to the show. All right, I got a little bit off track. So let's get back to changes and look at the timetable of emotional growth when we were kids. So let's take, for example, uh, kindergarten. Goldman hit the spot and said during this time was a peak of insecurity and humidity, jealousy and envy pride and confidence also described as social emotions which is something we do all the time compare oneself with others we started to learn more about how we handle ourselves and become more aware of our feelings after i read when a five-year-old enters a bigger social world in also enters the world of social comparison let me read that again when a five-year-old enters a bigger social world in also enters the world of social comparison Dude, this brought me back to those feelings. As we grow older, it's comparing ourselves with the smartest kid, the fastest kid, the coolest kid, or the dumbest kid. <laughs> then when we hit middle school and high school, oh man, those times are the marking of two crucial points in any kid's 
adjustment to changes. Here enters the feeling of self worth, which usually happens between the ages of 6 to 11 years old. And we always worry about if we can do well in school. If a kid fails, it sets in motion the self defeating talk we all know too well. And sadly, some of us take it into adulthood, maybe even into our entire lifespan. And what's after middle school? Ho ho ho! Oh yes! high school when puberty hits <laughs> i don't miss that time at all i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would agree with me on this one it's a time of extraordinary change in a child's biology thinking capacity and brain functioning and also a crucial time for emotional and, and social lessons <laughs> when we make the changes from middle school to high school it marks the end of childhood yes did you know that? I honestly didn't even, I, this is based on a research, okay? When we make the changes from middle school to high school, which is like say grade seven, going to high school, whatever, it marks the end of childhood because most youngsters between the age of 10 to 15 years old are exposed to sexuality, smoking, alcohol and drugs, and other temptations. I think the biggest blow during that time is self-esteem, self-esteem, self-esteem. I cannot tell you how, <laughs> how I had no confidence in high school I had confidence of being a brat and the know-it-all but at the same time I had no I, I had no idea what's going on <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of you are in the same way too if some of you guys knew what you were doing dude kudos to you kudos to you like many of us we're scrambling trying to be you know find ways of being more confident so the biggest blow during that time self-esteem our confidence students confidence is really to see if we can make friends and keep them, right? Where boys can be boys and show off their macho-ness, and then girls have the ability to build close friendships and nurture their self-confidence. Then comes college, then comes adulthood, and then life as we age. Maybe that was a long-winded example, but I just wanted to pinpoint that we have been through the most drastic change as a kid, and you are still alive and breathing. That just goes to show that you have a lot of strength to do what you're doing and where you are right now is natural. Everyone goes through this so you're not alone. Heck, I wouldn't even be surprised if you had epiphany after what I just said. I know I did. Just understanding it kind of makes me like, uh, okay, I shouldn't be as worried anymore because I went through the toughest shit in high school. <laughs> The more we go through things, the more we learn and life gets more comfortable because we know what to look out for, the good and the bad. Please don't dwell on what was, what it was. Please do not. Don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the great things that had happened. Those are great memories. Those are something you should always cherish. But great things always comes to an end as well. So be hopeful about the future, a brighter future that's coming. We can only accomplish great things if everyone has the same mindset. If you want positive, loving world, then all, everyone needs to be positive and loving as well. You know, you can't be a negative person wishing things were different, but you don't change your ways. That doesn't make sense. It's one of those things where the more we think about it, the more we see it around. What if we change our thoughts? To the things that could be possible. We look at Elon Musk. 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 Is that how you say Musk? Look at Elon Musk. He wants to save humanity, so he puts forth an idea of human life existing on Mars. The guy builds spaceships for crying out loud. One person alone cannot change the world, but a team, a community, or even a small group of people can. It's that vibrational wave of energy that connects us through and through. The interconnectedness of believing and the passion that everyone has. If you know me personally, you know how much I like change. I just can't help it, it and I kind of love it. It's both exciting and sometimes stressful at the same time, but what I've learned is that the more changes I go through, the less stress I become. Well, that's right, the more changes you go through, the less stress you will have. I'm gonna give you an example. When family and friends put themselves in my shoes, it's downright frightening. And I had friends kind of not yelling at me, but just saying like, dang, you're always changing. What's up with that? Like, why can't you just sit still? Why can't you do whatever? I had my reasons. Now, they would give me advice on what I should do. Advice on situations they have never experienced before. Think about it. 
<laughs> people would give me advice on situations they have never experienced before. I can see why. It's because they were giving me advice on things that they would do if they put themselves in my situation. Does that make sense? There are times when I may have been a brat. For example, when I decided to leave Canada to take my first solo trip to South Korea, I had my uncles calling me to stop me from going, or my parents urging me to change my thoughts and stop thinking nonsense. I remember asking one of them, Have you ever experienced what I wanted to do before? And when they said no, I, I said right away, like, How can you give me advice on a topic you have never experienced before? Now, fast forward to today, it was the best decision I have ever made in my life because it was one of my own where I stood by it. I got to learn how to read and write Hangul, which is Korean. I got to visit every inch of South Korea, Seoul. I got to meet so many different people to the point where I started being a travel guide for some expats that came in through Seoul. I even got to tutor and counsel university students and I was doing it for free. And because through those experiences brought me to where I'm at right now, I cannot even sum up the number of changes and lessons I have received from this trip. There's a reason behind it all, why I love changes. I wanted to learn how to adapt to different changing environments quicker in any situation, any place, with any person, or anything. Like a chameleon just walking to the room and just taking over the place. You know what I'm saying? Moving in different changing environments with grace and confidence. Like just putting me in whatever scenario and I can work with it without stressing myself out. So some of you thinking, okay, fine day. Change is unavoidable and will be constant in our lives. Yada 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 yada. How do you do it? Well, I thought you'll never, I ask. There are some ways to adapt to change and take advantage of it. I'm gonna tell you some of the ways that has helped me from a Business Harvard Review article I read years ago called How to Get Better at Dealing with Change. One, find humor in a situation. Life as it is is already stressful and we take it too seriously sometimes. I always try to find something funny in a serious moment so we can lighten it up a bit, which helps other people feel better. One researcher said, It lightens the mood and improves social interaction. I'm all in for it, but a good rule of thumb is that other people's issue is no laughing matter. So if like someone is crying to you and just trying to tell you like, they're de like, don't laugh at them, obviously, but bring in your own struggles because your own struggles can be a source of comedic relief. Haha. -ha. Two, this next one is something I'm still curious and learning about. Talk about the problems more than feelings. Let me repeat that. Talk about the problems more than feelings. One of the most common myths of dealing with unwanted changes is that we can work through our anger, fears, and frustrations by talking about them. And a lot of it. Research has shown that when we actively keep repeating our destructive negative emotions of how we felt, we keep adapting to those feelings. It means that we keep torturing ourselves to feel those feelings over and over and over again. Don't suck it up. Don't ignore your problems. Call it as it is. Like, ah, it's my anxiety that keeps me up at night. Or, oh man, my anger issue is messing up my relationship. You've got to be real with yourself on this. Number three, oh my goodness, this one is a doozy. Don't stress out about stressing out. <laughs> Let me say that again. Don't stress out about stressing out. If you believe stress kills you, oh my friend, it will. Stanford Psychology back in 2016 argues that your stress reaction is a greater impact on your health and success than the stress itself. But stress, on the other hand, the good stress, can lift and move you through challenging situations and you become more resilient and may even live longer. So when you do start to feel stress, ask yourself, what is your stress trying to do to you? Is that a fear or is it to help you accomplish tasks and goals. We forget, we forget that there are always two sides of the coin. Stress can be a good thing if you choose to see it that way. Change your thoughts, change your life. So there you have it. What you need to do is embrace change and let it happen. If you're not feeling comfortable with it, 
read about it, read more about things, look at, find other ways to deal with it and adapt to it. The reason why I have this podcast is to be able to share things with you because I've been through it, a lot of other people have been through it, and I'm just here to tell you the same story or lessons that I've learned and from what other people have learned as well because it can help you. Now, remember, change is everything. It really does help with a lot of things. If there's no change, there's no growth, my friends. Thank you for joining me on The Dang Good Show. Make sure you visit my website, thedanggoodshow.com, where you can subscribe to the show on Apple, Google, or Spotify, or wherever it is, just so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you find valuable information on the show, I would greatly appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up and a good ratings on iTunes or whichever platform you're listening from. But even if you simply tell a friend about the show, that would totally help me out too. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm C. Dang signing out. I'll catch you next time.